so you've signed up for a class in technical writing. My guess, though, is that some of you, at least, are a little unsure about what technical writing even means. Is it writing in a technical way? Writing about technical topics? Obviously, if we're going to learn to produce technical writing, we need to start by figuring out what technical writing is. First, it's important to note that the official name of this course is Technical and Business Writing. Outside of the course, you'll find some different definitions for the term technical writing. To some people, the term does refer specifically to writing about technical topics like software documentation or scientific reports, for example. But in this course, we'll use the term a little more broadly to refer to any writing that you do as part of your job. If you're in a technical field, that writing may be about technical topics, but even writing done for non-technical jobs is considered technical writing, technically. It's also important to note that technical writing is an actual career field. You can get a job as a technical writer, in other words. However, most technical writing is done by people who have completely different jobs. If you're aiming for any professional career, the kind of career that requires a college degree, in other words, you'll almost certainly end up being asked to write as part of that job. And the kind of writing you'll be asked to do is the kind that this class covers. In fact, in a 2016 survey, Employers identified writing skills as the third most desirable trait in any potential employee, right behind leadership skills and ability to work on a team, which, incidentally, we'll also be doing in this class. In a separate survey conducted in 2004, more than half of employers in all sectors reported using writing skills as a criterion for promotion. In other words, people who can write effectively in the workplace are more likely to get hired and more likely to get promoted. You may be thinking to yourself at this point that you're in good shape since you've been writing in school for many years. In fact, virtually all of you had to take a college-level writing class, English 1301, as a prerequisite to this course. But there are a lot of significant differences between the kind of writing you've been doing in school and the kinds of writing you'll be asked to do in the workplace. The beginning of Chapter 1 in your textbook introduces some of these differences including the importance of information security and concerns about legal liability in the workplace. But I think it really comes down to a couple of key points. First, writing at school is about you. When you write an essay for school, you're trying to demonstrate that you can write an essay. You're essentially showing off your skills, and you're rewarded for those skills with a grade, or punished for a lack of those skills with a grade, as the case may be. But technical writing is not about you. It's about the task that you're trying to accomplish. When you write at the workplace, you're trying to get something done, not demonstrate that you know how to perform that writing task. And the writing that you create at the workplace doesn't belong to you in most cases. Often your name won't even be on it. If you look at the manual which came with those new AirPods you got for Christmas, you won't see an author's name. As far as the world is concerned, Every piece of writing created by somebody working at Apple was written by Apple. Second, and this is maybe the most important point we'll cover all semester, nobody wants to read the writing you create at work. They only read it because they have to. That may sound harsh, but it's not meant to because, as I covered just a minute ago, technical writing isn't about you. When I say that nobody wants to read your writing, I'm not saying there's something wrong with your writing specifically. It's just the nature of the workplace. Think about the example I just gave. If you did receive AirPods for Christmas, there's a good chance you tried to get them to work without even reading the instructions, because that's easier to do. And if you did read the instructions, you probably threw them away as soon as you figured out how to get the AirPods to work. Think about that. Somebody wrote those instructions knowing that almost nobody wants to read them. The only people who are reading those instructions are people who have to read them, people who need that information. And the same thing is true about writing inside a workplace. I get many emails from colleagues every day, and I'm never excited to read them. I do read them because I have to, because they give me important information, but almost never because I want to. These two points mean that you have to think about writing at work differently than writing for school. One quick example is that I will never give you minimum word counts for assignments in this class. I'll never say that you have to write at least 1,000 words or a minimum of five pages 
because those requirements don't make sense in a professional setting. Your supervisor or your team leader will never say that you have to write at least a thousand words in a report. They want the report to be as brief as possible because, as we've covered, nobody wants to read your writing. So what is important in technical writing then? As I've already said, technical writing covers a broad range of styles, modes, documents, and situations, but we can make a few generalizations about successful technical writing. In chapter one of the textbook, it talks about a survey of professional organizations that identified the following characteristics of good technical writing. According to that survey, those characteristics are, in order, accuracy, clarity, conciseness, readability, usability, and correctness. So that's what professionals say is important in technical writing. I'd actually condense that list a bit to what I call the four C's. Technical writing should be clear, concise, correct, and above all, careful. We'll cover each of those points in more detail as we move through that throughout the semester. But if you start with those four principles in mind, you're on your way to effective and successful technical writing.